Hey guys, been a little while since I've done a tech news, uh, well, hardware news, whatever it is, type of video. I've been extremely busy with work. As most of you know, I am a high school math teacher, and my school is probably shifting to students coming in person back to the classroom soon, and that has been a big change that I've been having to prepare for. Anyway, you'll also notice that I'm back on my laptop setup, so maybe the uh, you know image quality is back down to 1080p and not as good of a microphone and all that, but should be reasonably okay for y'all. All right, well, I wanna talk about a few things I've been able to pull out of the CES stuff, but like I said, I've been pretty busy with work, so let me know in the comment section if there's something super interesting that I've missed. One thing I've been interested in is new AMD GPUs, um, especially the, you know, these steps down. Not everybody wants to pay, uh, you know, if you got one at MSRP, almost $600 for a 6,800, right? And there was nothing new below that. So when are we getting like the 6,700? When are we getting the lower end cards? A lot of people were hoping for soon, but all we're getting right now confirmed is first half of 2021. I would have loved to have seen something, um, you know, earlier than that. And I have seen rumors suggesting March... Uh, that's, uh, that's what we got here. By the way, I'll link all these articles in the description to this video, as my subscribers are used to, and thank you all of my subscribers. You are beautiful people. Well, maybe not. I've never seen you. Anyway. <laughs> all right. Um, so anyway, basically, we didn't get a whole lot of information about these cards from AMD. I was hoping for more. Uh, we got a tweet like this. AMD is on track to launch the first notebook, so this is saying that they will be getting these cards also available as mobile GPUs uh, in the first half of 2021, and you'll see mainstream RDNA 2 desktop graphics cards card designs in the first half of the year as well. Now, you'll see the card designs in the first half of the year. I don't know, guys. Uh, I guess I didn't really need to click on that tweet. Uh, I just got to say, I was hoping to get things out a little bit sooner, but I guess with supply and everything the way it is, you, uh, maybe they're trying to avoid as much of a paper launch as, uh, as the 6800 series. Maybe they're trying to delay until they actually have the ability to supply these cards. <laughs> anyway, but if you're hoping for really soon on those um, mid-range and low-range uh, AMD cards, it's looking like you're going to be waiting. Speaking of mobile uh, discrete GPUs, we're... Um, uh, I've been like trying to keep an eye on the NVIDIA stuff as well. We've got the 3060 has been announced for a while. And this is just an example of one of the cards uh, that is confirmed to be launching here. And what I was interested in is what kind of pricing we would see. So here's at least one AIB um, 3060, again, not TI, 3060, uh, appearing to be going for about $329. So I'm guessing that that is probably representative of what we'll be seeing for the 3060s. So then imagine, you know, 3050 Ti, probably subtract, what, another 50 bucks off of that? Hopefully more, but we'll see, you know? And then, um, you know, a 3050, subtract a bit more. So we can start to predict what sort of pricing we'll see here. If any of you have more information on if there's pricing available for some of those other cards, uh, let me know in the comments section. Like I said, I'm usually a little more on top of all the news, but been very busy lately. And CES has a lot of news coming out. Now, um, again, speaking of mobile discrete GPUs, Intel. We know that Intel, it's very exciting. I love more competition in this space, and Intel has been uh, getting something ready for us as an actual discrete GPU rather than just doing their um, you know, integrated graphics on their CPUs. Well, we've got some information that they might be targeting a TSMC 7 nanometer node, and this is a more advanced node than the one that is currently being used, for example, by AMD. This is kind of a upgraded 7 nanometer node. And, you know, we'll see what comes of that. Now, again, we were pretty sure that Intel was going to be, uh, you know, outsourcing that manufacturing. You know, Intel does produce some of their own chips. They have that capability, unlike other companies that usually outsource. Um, but they're, it's looking like the discrete GPUs will be outsourced, and it's now looking like it could be um, that, uh, that TSMC process, the more advanced 7 nanometer process, which is rumored to possibly uh, be called 6 nanometer. We'll see what happens with that. Now, we don't have a lot of information about what exactly to expect from these discrete GPUs, but I believe they are planned as mobile GPUs to pair up with Tiger Lake H and Alder Lake P gaming laptops. And um, the, again, the rumors are pointing to six or eight gigabytes of GDDR6. And 
Um, again, we are rumoring, to, again, rumors, rumors, rumors. So, you know, there's your mandatory grain of salt, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, 4,096 cores, which are Intel's shading units, um, which is going with their 512 execution units, each one having eight unified cores. Now, I don't know all the details exactly, you know, what type of performance to expect from that, but we do... Um, I was hoping to hear more from in, about this during um, the CES event from Intel, but it didn't seem to happen. Again, some of those rumors are based on the, the specs, like, like why do we think that that's going to be true? There has been some analysis of uh, lines of code in the latest Intel drivers, which are starting to uh, um, you know, build in some of the support for these GPUs um, that they would be launching. Now, speaking of mobile GPUs, here's the thing I was actually most interested in. And, oh, this article is going to need me to fly to the side here. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. Okay, now I'm out of the way. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is over here at Notebook Check. And at Notebook Check, I guess they've got their hands on some Ampere mobile benchmarks. Now this is, uh, they're claiming up to 18% faster than Turing Mobile, but don't expect Ampere desktop class performance, and that's based on some synthetic benchmarks. I believe this is 3D Mark 11 right here, and they've got a nice chart for you to take a look at. So you can see at the top of their chart, they have a 6800 XT desktop processor. They've got a 3080 desktop processor. And we've got a 3070 desktop processor, but now you can start dropping in where does the mobile come in? It's looking like the 3080 mobile is right here. Um, if we, and by the way, this I really like this chart uh, because you can highlight, again, I'll have the link to this notebook check article. So you can highlight whichever one you want to be set as your standard, and then you can see the percent plus or minus of the other cards relative to that. So for example, if we set the 3080 mobile as our 0%, right, that's our baseline then the, uh, you know, it looks like it's going to be slower than a desktop 3070, um, the 3070 having the 7% advantage that we're seeing here when I highlight it. So you could play around here if you want to see exactly how this ch these chips are going to perform. However, keep in mind that um, mobile chips have Max-P and Max-Q variants. That affects their TDP, the amount of power that they're allowed to draw, and there's a lot of tuning range in that for the actual notebook. So you can't really know how these cards are going to uh, perform in any particular laptop until that actual laptop gets benchmarked because of the cooling and power and all of that being limited to that particular laptop. All right, guys, the last thing I wanted to say is most of you guys who follow a lot of tech news probably already saw this yesterday. But on the CPU side of things, we do have some benchmarks of the Intel's uh, Core i9-11900K, uh, flagship up against the Ryzen 5900X. And these this graph is from Intel. So again, take that as you will, given that Intel is obviously biased, but I don't think that they would be motivated to give completely false results here. Um, I, I think they probably did actually benchmark these games. Where you would start to see the um, you know bias come in might be in which games did they select to show off. There might be games where these CPUs would be tied or where Ryzen would still have the advantage, and Intel is going to choose not to show us those. So that's where I would expect the bias here to come in. I would expect these to be actually benchmarked fairly. Um, again, your opinion on that might, may vary, but that is my opinion on that. Now, what games do we have here? It's looking like we have Total War Three Kingdoms. Uh, at the 1080p high settings. Again, the reason you would benchmark a CPU at 1080p is you want the you want to show off the difference between the CPUs, not the GPUs. Um, and in that one, we had the largest gain possible at 8%. Gears of War 5 at 1080p Ultra was a 5% win for Intel. Metro Exodus 1080p high, 5% win for Intel. Cyberpunk 2077 1080p high, we got a 4% win for Intel. Watch Dogs Legion 1080p Ultra, 4% win for Intel. Far Cry New Dawn, 1080p Ultra, 3% win for Intel. And Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 1080p very high, 2% win for Intel. Again, that's the 11900K versus the 5900X. Now, uh, again, here's kind of my opinion on this, though. If you're buying these flagship CPUs, unless you're into, like, extreme eSports, you're probably pairing this up at a, at a high resolution, at least 1440p, if not 4K, or like a 1440p ultra-wide or something like that in which case you're most likely to be bound by your GPU anyway, 
which means that in general, you know, five to eight percent, you know, two to eight percent difference isn't that much anyway. And when you're playing at higher resolutions, which you again, you probably would be if you're spending this much money, if you're you're going to be more bound by your GPU. And so in reality, you probably would see almost identical performance in games between these two CPUs. Um, if you're playing at demanding settings at high resolutions. But I do like to see competition in this market because competition will, again, help spur innovation as well as hopefully keep prices in check, at least if people could actually produce anything <laughs> so that supply and demand isn't our, um, our, and scalpers aren't our main battle here. All right, guys, let me know what you think about all this in the comment section, and I hope you have an excellent day.